Hi there, my name is Diana Batokio and I work in student services at Coquitlam College. I'd like to welcome you to the Coquitlam College or CC orientation that happens at the beginning of each semester. During this orientation, you'll be introduced to different campus resources and services that are offered to all students. Uh, after a welcome from our administration, uh, you'll learn skills from various campus uh, staff members about how to register, calculate your GPA, access your student portal. Um, you'll get an intro to MyCC and even many library resources. You'll also learn about uh, COVID rules, immigration regulations, and more, most importantly, where to find more information. Uh, we hope that you'll have a great semester. Remember, come back here and review any of this information at any time during the semester, or visit student services, or the computer lab, or the front office, or the library if you have more information, or your teacher can also lead you into the right direction. Now to start off, without further ado, here's our principal, Chris Rams, who has a welcome for you and some more information. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to the upcoming semester at Coquitlam College. My name is Chris Rands and I'm the principal at the college. If you're a returning student, I want to welcome you back to the semester and I hope you had a relaxing and rewarding summer. If you are a new student at the college, welcome to Coquitlam College. I hope if you're entering the English Studies program, the Senior Secondary program, or any of our post-secondary programs, you're excited, a little bit nervous, but ready to go. And so I would like to welcome all of you to the semester. I would also like to encourage you to take some time before the semester starts or at the beginning of the semester to look at all of the resources that we have provided you on our website or in the portal so that you can learn about the programs that you are in. I really encourage you to take some time to understand what you are taking and what you will be taking in the future. Also, if you have any questions about that, feel free to come to Student Services and meet with any of us to get more information about the courses or the program that you are in. Finally, I would also like to say that the college has brought back clubs and activities and sports, and, and so I really think that it's a good idea for you to join as many of those as you can that you are interested in, because you will meet new people, you will feel connected to the community, and you will do what you can to help us enjoy ourselves during the semester. So once again, welcome to the semester. Have a great time at Coquitlam College, and I wish you well. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to my portion of the Coquitlam College New Student Orientation. My name is Chris Rands, and I am the Vice Principal at the College. I hope my colleagues and I are giving you a lot of useful advice and providing a lot of information for you in either of our programs, in our high school program or our university program, our Associate of Arts degree program, and our English Studies program. Um, a lot of the information you hear today will guide you and will really enrich your experience at the school and help you get into what your next steps will be, whether they are in school or whether they are at um, a, a job or, or just traveling and doing whatever you want with these programs. Um, once again, I really think that our session today will help you with that. Um, before I begin on my portion of it, of course, I want to wish all of you well and I want to say that I hope that you and your friends and family are doing okay at this time. It's, of course, a very difficult time for us um, as we get through the pandemic and we return to school and I, I think that as exciting as it is for all of you to come to the college and, and see what all of this is about, there's also a little bit of nervousness, right? And the nervousness is usually a good thing, but of course at this time, um, some of the nervousness is, is to deal with health and safety as well. And so I think that um, Diana Wright will talk a lot about what is taking place at the school to ensure that, that we are safe and that everything is going properly in terms of the health authority and, and just the overall sense of keeping people in a good place when they come to the college. And so, uh, yes, I, as I said earlier, I really, really hope that everything is going well for you and that uh, fortune smiles on all of us and that we get through all of this and, and enjoy being back to whatever life we had prior to the pandemic. Um, and so now, my job here is a little bit difficult because I have to give you some of the, the serious and, and difficult news that, is, that students need to hear um, in order to, to do well and to be successful. And the one thing I would say to you is to really prepare yourselves and to really get to know 
what you are doing in your program. You know, it's, it's not enough just to say, well, I'm going to talk to friends or I'm going to hope that everything is okay. Um, unfortunately, part of my job every semester is to tell a few students, not many, but a few, that they've made some mistakes and that they have not taken the correct courses or they've not quite got to a GPA that is required. And uh, some of them, all they can say to me is, well, I didn't know or, or nobody told me that. And of course, we are here to talk and, and to tell and to answer questions and we do it repeatedly. But at the end of a program, whether it's a high school program or post-secondary program, the more that students know and the better prepared they are themselves, the more likely they are going to hear good news from us at the end. And so um, it's, it's unfortunate that it is my job to, to give this warning to you, but it's important that you hear it, that um, the more you know and the more research you do and the more questions you ask, probably the more likely you are to finish this program or a high school program. And finish it on time and finish it without any real unfortunate surprises. And so uh, talk to us, contact us, ask us questions, make sure you understand. But then also there are other things that you can do, I think, that will really help you with this. And the college has a number of policies that are on our website in the About Us section. Take your time to read them. And, and don't just say, yes, okay, I've looked at them, but actually read them and understand them because they are there to inform you and to empower you and to really help you as you get through this. And then also um, uh, our colleague, Mike Williams, is preparing a checklist for you and he's going to talk about, say, the requirements in a diploma program or an associate degree program. Really take the time to understand them and, and read all of the information on the back of those checklists because they will help you. And, and then again, ask us questions. Ask your instructors questions. Do talk to your friends and your classmates because of, they, of course they know as well. But in your heart of hearts, really when you're talking to yourself about do I understand my program, only you can answer that question. And if you can answer it positively, yes, I understand the program I'm in, then chances are you're going to do better. And, and, and really, I really encourage you to do that. Um, and so that's one part of this, you know, that, that we are always here and I want to meet all of you in the school and, and all of the academic advisors and the admin staff do as well. But we have to really have a sense that you are able to do much of this on your own as well and, and really understand what you need to do. Um, it's, it's really an unfortunate part of my job when I have to explain to somebody, oh, I'm sorry that you, you know, your GPA wasn't quite high enough. It's a government regulation that needs to be a 2.0. And then a student is left just saying, well, I didn't know that. What do I do now? And I can advise after that, but it just, it, it helps if the student knew at the beginning of a, a program or in the middle of a program, the grades that I do need to get, right? And, and how do I now get to a 2.0 GPA for my degree? It's just, it's the little things like this that if students prepare themselves and work on it, they will do better. They just will. And they'll have more control over their own situations in this program or in a high school program. Um, okay, so I think I've made my point with that. Okay, please take the time to research. Please take the time to ask us some questions. Um, we have in the past had counseling sessions and we've had school-based sessions and we've had information sessions where we invite students. It's just a general invitation for students to attend these things. I really encourage you to come to them or to join them online if we are offering, offering them online. Take every chance you can to learn about the school, to learn about classes, and to learn about the programs themselves. Okay, so next, speaking about the classes, I think that, you know, all of you are going into courses that are different, perhaps, than what you've studied in the past, or they are a continuation of what you've studied in the past. Try something new. Try some courses that are new. You, you have in your programs the freedom to try something new and expand your learning and expand your education. I really think that some of the things I hear from students at the end as well is they, they loved courses that they didn't know anything about. And then they took those and they applied them to where they are working or to where they 
uh, where they want to go for their next program or to just basically anything in their life. They find that some of these courses that they just tried really, really impacted them positively. And I, I would encourage you to do that as well. Try some of these classes. If you want to hear more about the course before you register, of course, an academic counselor, an academic advisor can help you with that. And so it's, it's going into a secondary program or a post-secondary program gives you all sorts of freedoms. And I really encourage you to take those freedoms and try things that you just, you know, make you a, a, an interesting student and, and give you a, a broad-based set of skills and a set of knowledge. Uh, so there you are. That's some of my advice to you. I hope you have a terrific semester. I know some of you are still studying online, so I look forward to talking to those students and I look forward to meeting you in my school and seeing you in the hallways and in the office and hearing how you're doing and just getting back to a more traditional type of Coquitlam College educational experience. And so I will start to see you next week. Good luck. Good luck for sure. And take care. Again, stay safe. And I hope all of those in your lives stay safe as well. Thank you very much. Bye. Hi there, I'm the uh, principal of Coquitlam College. My name is Will Eckford, and uh, we're here to just tell you a little bit about the school and to uh, welcome students back and to welcome new students coming. So I will, uh, we're going to have a little interview with me. And um... Yeah, my name is Diana, and I work in marketing, and I also work in student services. So first of all, Will, um, let's have some background information about Coquitlam College. What can you tell the students? Well, we've been here quite a while, since 1982. And, uh, as you can tell from the color of my hair, I've been here almost as long. I, think I started in 1984, and we've always been an international school. And uh, it's been very successful. We've sent uh, thousands of students to uh, university. And now that we're on a work study program, we've uh, sent many students to jobs in Canada. So um, the school has always had, you know, different sectors. We've got an ESL department and a high school and university transfer program. Um, I guess really in the beginning, there were lots of international students from Hong Kong and then China and now uh, India. And uh, the, uh, the majority of our students study tend to study various business programs, but we have all kinds of um, of courses in many different subject areas. So uh, we're a private um, college, and we are relatively small. We have a few thousand students. Um, it allows it to be more like a family atmosphere in school. So. Um, We've had a reasonably long history since 1982, so uh, it's uh, a great place to work and I think a great place to study. Great. Yeah. Why do you think uh, this is, uh, what's one of the best reasons to study at Coquitlam College? Well, I think it all starts with the staff at the school. You know, they're, they're highly qualified, they're used to teaching international students. Uh, it's That's one of the main pleasures for myself. For, for, each of us working here, that uh, we work with really nice people, are kind, we understand the, the problems that international students might have, just in just include Canadian uh, culture. And I think small classes and uh, uh, focused academic work that uh, produces really successful results. Nice. It's, um, it's, it's, it's good that it's a great school to come to. Good. Well, thank you very much. That was yeah. a great introduction. I hope you enjoy this orientation, and we look forward to seeing you here on campus. Yeah, so uh, welcome to Canada, and all these things. It's going to be a good semester. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Hi there. It's Diana again from Student Services. I'm going to continue this orientation um, with some news and updates for all students on our campus whether you're studying at our main Coquitlam campus or if you're on the Surrey campus, the rules uh, apply. So here's what I'll go over on my presentation. I'll go over some rules in, for on campus, like masks and um, things that are coming up, how to behave on campus, et cetera. Then I'm gonna go into some of the new uh, regulations and current regulations 
uh, for everything from arriving in Canada to study or arriving in British Columbia, rules that, that are uh, applied to you living in British Columbia, et cetera. And then I'll finish up with uh, some information from the International Student Advising um, Office. Uh, so if you have any in questions about uh, being here in Canada with your study permit, uh, that's where you should go to find out more information and find out more rules. So rules, rules, rules. Let's start with the rules on campuses, um, starting with mask requirements. Now, earlier in during the pandemic, um, masks were required in all indoor spaces. And currently, um, masks are encouraged, but they are not required. So in the classroom, some of your teachers might ask for you to wear your masks. Um, in the hallways, you are free to wear a mask or not, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, these rules might change during the semester, but at the moment, uh, that's where we stand. Um, socializing in hallways on campus, um, we have a lot of open spaces uh, where you can rest, relax, meet your friends, but please kind of keep it moving in the hallways. Um, there are always classes going on at all times uh, and meetings happening and so try to keep the hallways uh, nice and quiet and clear and um, find the, the spaces such as the cafeteria or if you want to play sports in the gym or um, other covered areas outside, I'll talk about those later, um, find some areas that are not specifically always in the hallway. Um, now, when you speak to your teachers or come in to talk to counselors or go into the library, um, just try to be courteous during this time of COVID. Uh, if you see that uh, they prefer to wear masks, it might be a good idea to put your mask on as well. Always keep a safe social distance as well. Six feet or um, a couple of meters is a good uh, guideline. Um, we just always want to keep our community safe and try not to spread uh, this, uh, this illness because it'll just take away uh, sick days from your semester. And so we want to uh, avoid that as much as possible. Um, trying to keep things clean. One thing about, uh, about COVID is that we actually are still cleaning all the surfaces and we have uh, staff that uh, are keeping the, um, the campus sanitized. So we do ask you just to bring water in the classrooms and not to bring any food or any other kind of uh, drinks so that we can minimize spillage as much as possible. Uh, finally, last two topics, um, only registered students are allowed on campus, so please don't invite your friends to come and meet you here unless they are also Coquitlam College students. And um, just keep the lines of communications open with your teachers and with uh, CC administration. Like, so remember, if you do get sick during the semester, we'll talk about this again later, but, um, you know, make sure you notify people by email or um, or in person if, if, if it's uh, applicable. Now, during the pandemic, some of our spaces were closed and now uh, a lot of things are going back to normal, thankfully, so that's really great. Uh, this means that uh, we do have a lot more student activities happening um, during the semester. Every semester is different, but uh, whether you are in the English program, the high school program, or even the uh, university program, there's always going to be a lot of activities on and off campus that might be of interest to you. Everything from a welcome barbecue to a party, a big party inviting all the students on campus, could be in the gym, could be wherever outside. Um, keep your eyes open, teachers will announce and in social media you'll be able to find out more information about upcoming activities. Now in the past the gym was closed, uh, but now it's open again. So if you want to play some sports and join some different activities during lunchtime or after school, you'll see that there will be a big choice uh, during the semester. Um, you'll, if you travel downstairs, you'll see that the lunch area, there is an area that you can sit with uh, groups of friends and enjoy your lunch or have a break between classes. Um, we have an area also called Bird Hall. It's in the main um, 
down the main hallway uh, from the, uh, the gym and the main office, you'll see that this is an area that you can have uh, for socializing as long as you keep it kind of quiet, but also there's some study carols and areas to relax. Finally, there are other areas in the school for you, uh, such as the computer lab, if you need to do some homework or print out some, um, some things. Um, also, um, even the, the library, but just be aware that those are quiet places. Those are not places to laugh and socialize. Those are places to study. Now, like I said before, stay tuned uh, during the semester. You will hear more information. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure that you uh, follow our social media, uh, such as Instagram or even Facebook. Um, we'll be promoting a lot of activities during the semester on there. Uh, could be hiking, it could be um, skiing, it could even be uh, um, like I said, a concert, it's always different every semester. So hopefully you find something that's really fun for you. Um, now, recently, I guess uh, during 2022, we opened a new covered outdoor seating area. So as long as the weather's nice, you are welcome to uh, relax in the open air. They do say that that's nice and healthy. So you can also go into the gym, as I mentioned before, if you want to, um, you know, play sports. Um, the outdoor area, though, is great because uh, during the semester, sometimes we invite food trucks to come. And of course, this will all be advertised, but food trucks, student activities, all um, coming up. Now, next, I'd like to talk a little bit about more COVID related news. Um, first of all, you can always go to our website, uh, www.coquitlamcollege.com backslash alert, A-L-E-R-T, or you can just go to the main page of our website and click on the red banner at the top. Here you'll find everything from updates about uh, regulations regarding COVID. Uh, you'll also find updates about uh, being here in Canada with your study permit, so IRCC updates. Uh, you'll also find links to other useful information, mental health or even vaccination information. That's where you find all that. Now, starting off with regulations for Canada, specifically even British Columbia, um, most students here at Coquitlam College are international students. So you know that to come into Canada, you needed to download the Arrive Can app. You also needed to have proof of vaccination in order to enter Canada. Um, so you really won't, at the moment anyway, you won't need to show proof of vaccination to walk around. In the past, we had a BC vaccine card, but just know if you ever have to leave the country again, every time you re-enter the country, you're going to have to fill in all the information on the Arrive Can app. It is a federal government regulation. Um, now, uh, as far as the mask mandate goes, like I said before, uh, rules can change uh, depending on uh, what happens in the fall. If cases of COVID go up, then uh, if uh, we are mandated to uh, require masks um, in all indoor places, we will follow whatever the rules are for the safety of our community. Um, vaccine clinics is another interesting um, topic for students. Uh, it, if you are interested in um, getting a booster shot uh, during the upcoming semesters uh, as a study permit or temporary resident, um, a study permit holder or a temporary resident of uh, Canada, you are eligible to get a vaccine and a booster just like every other person in Canada. So uh, I will put information about that on the alert page of the Coquitlam College website. Um, uh, if you have any other questions, you can come in and ask at Student Services. Now here's some frequently asked questions about COVID. Um, it's important for you, no matter which program you're in, um, to always remember, uh, keep in touch with the school if you do get sick. So let's go through these questions and uh, one at a time. Number one, how do I avoid getting sick? Well, washing your hands, staying away from, you know, keeping your distance from people um, and wearing a mask 
if at all possible. That's how you avoid getting sick. Um, what do you do if you get sick? Well, if you feel that you might have COVID or if you think, oh, I think it's just a cold. Now the government in British Columbia is giving out free um, COVID tests. You can get them at any pharmacy. Um, so I would always go and test yourself as soon as possible. Sometimes you have to even wait three days after initial uh, symptoms in order to even get that positive test result. If you're getting negative test results, you can still come to school. Um, but if you're not feeling well, always wear a mask. As soon as you find out that you indeed do have COVID, then number three, if I test positive, who do I need to notify? Well, you should always notify your teachers. Email all of your instructors immediately. Uh, you can also e email the college, just give your student number. Um, you can phone the college as well, and they will also notify your teachers on your behalf. So you can email admissions at coquitlamcollege.com. You can also go to our website, find the staff uh, on the website, and then, um, find the emails that are on there. Uh, just make sure that you're in contact. If you're in home stay, tell your home stay to contact the school. Uh, and if you're in the English studies or a high school program, your teachers might be able to give you work to do while you are uh, isolating. Now the rule is in British Columbia um, that you, if you test positive for COVID, then you have to self-isolate for five days. So that means missing a week of school. Uh, your university uh, instructors uh, might be able to send you some information via email or by using your um, this MyCC. Uh, keep in touch with your teachers at all time. Um, really, you should be able to return after five days, but if you still have severe symptoms, then stay home until you're feeling much better and then come back wearing a mask for at least 10 days. Um, what if I'm a close contact of someone that tests positive? Well, in British Columbia, if you're a close contact, you don't have to self-isolate. You only self-isolate if you test positive yourself. Now, the rules are always changing. This is currently what uh, we're told. And if anything changes, then um, through social media and through our website, we should be able to relay this information to you. Finally, um, I'll touch a little bit on international student advising. Now, I am the RECIA for the college. That means I'm the regulated uh, international student immigration advisor. So I have a, a lot of uh, um, answers to your questions about uh, being a study permit holder in Canada and what you're, what you're able to do and what you can't do. So what I'll touch on right now is just some questions that you might have. Uh, we'll go over some common topics uh, that you should be aware of. And if you ever have any more questions, then we will have some webinars or online presentations going on during the semester. Um, and you can always come in student services and ask more questions. So here's some topics just for you to understand. Some of these are really more important for university transfer students or our associate degree students in specifically. Um, but uh, let me go over it for even if you are a high school or English studies student, I'll tell you how, how it's different. So here are some topics to understand. Number one, enrollment status. Now in Canada, you have a study permit that allows you to study in Canada. You uh, can be a part-time student, you can be a full-time student. Where it matters is if you're an associate degree student and you're allowed to work in Canada as well, if your study permit says you're allowed to work, then you must maintain at least three associate of arts or university transfer courses minimum during the semester. This also means that you don't want to drop one course and go down to two courses during the semester because that means that uh, you are part-time. And if you go to part-time, you are not allowed to work at all. Um, if you are a full-time student, so minimum three courses, then you're able to work up to 20 hours a week um, while studying. And then during semester breaks, so little weeks between the semesters, you're allowed to work full-time. 
Now, if you're a high school or an English studies student, you are not allowed to work in Canada. So this only applies to associate degree students. Number two, what does scheduled breaks mean? Now, scheduled breaks are for us only the weeks between semesters. We, we don't allow students to take a semester off. Sometimes students say, oh, I only wanna study fall and spring and I don't wanna study in the summer, I wanna work. Well, that's not allowed. Uh, you have to be a full-time student during your whole program. Now, high school students, English studies students, you're different because you maybe are only here for one semester or two semesters, one um, high school grade, et cetera. So you're here with your study permit, you're allowed to study, you're allowed to live in Canada as a temporary resident, and you're not allowed to work, so it's different. Um, number three, maintaining your student status. Now, make sure you always pay attention to the expiry date on your study permit. You do not want to let this lapse without renewing your study permit. If you have any questions about renewing your study permit, come and see me in student services or talk to one of the academic advisors who'll be able to uh, refer you to somebody who might be able to help you or definitely will refer you to some online links uh, to show you where you can find out how to do this. Um, you're allowed to renew your study permit if it is expiring up to three months in advance. So that's probably the good time to do it, 90 days before. Um, you just have to go into your MyGC account. That's the Government of Canada account that you set up initially to get your study permit. Um, and, you know, anytime you, if you're a new student, for example, that's where you would go to update uh, that now you've changed and you're at Coquitlam College. Um, but always make sure that uh, you, you, your study permit is valid. Otherwise, you have to stop all activities and then renew. Now, when you do renew your study permit, if you don't receive your new one and you're still holding on to the old one um, that has an expiry date that's passed, well, don't worry. As long as you renewed your study permit before the, the expiration date, then you are what the government calls under maintained status and you can wait until the new document arrives, continue on working if you're an associate degree student and continue studying. Otherwise, if you have let your study permit expire, you have to stop coming to student services and find out what to do next. Um, it'll be a little bit of a headache. Number four, actively pursuing your studies. The government says that they want you to make reasonable progress towards your goal. So it doesn't matter in which program you're in. If you are a, a study permit holder, you have to be here to study. So that means passing as many courses as you uh, can and, um, uh, and taking at least three courses or being full-time in each program. So make sure that you are all making your studies your number one priority in Canada. This is a message, especially to our associate degree students who we know uh, work at the same time. And so please don't let your work get in, in uh, interfere with your studying because um, this can have repercussions when you want to apply for your PGWP after. Now, speaking of which, number five, this is only for associate degree students transitioning from studying to working. So you know you've finished all your 20 courses of your associate degree, you've gone into student services and you've talked to a counselor, you know you have the minimum GPA to graduate, you have to submit an application for graduation, just go into our main website and uh, you can just type in letter and, or uh, sorry, go to associate degree and you'll find that there is a um, online uh, application that you can download and then you send it in by email. Um, now, students always come in and ask questions about uh, working. When do I work part-time? When can I work full-time? Well, at the end of your last semester, you can only work part-time until you finally receive that letter of completion that comes also with your associate degree and your transcript. When that comes in the mail, you should apply immediately the same day for your PGWP. That's going online to your MyGC account and uh, applying. As soon as you have that confirmation that you applied, then you can transition to working full time. Again, you'll be in a type of maintained status. You will be able to stay in Canada, even though you're, you're currently, you're holding a study permit, 
but since you applied for your PGWP, you can continue working full time uh, while you wait for that uh, document to actually arrive in the mail. Now that's all I have for today. I hope you have a great semester. So on behalf of all of us in student services and in the office at Coquitlam College, uh, best wishes for a successful semester. Bye. Hello everyone. My name is Mike Williams and I'm one of the counselors here at the college. Thank you so much for taking the time to join this orientation, orientation session. So now that you've met me, I can't wait to meet you soon. I'm gonna walk you through some of the information that you need to know and will help you be more successful uh, now that you're a Coquitlam College student. The first thing I wanna share with you from our college is about counseling. Counselors are available from Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. We have online and in-person meetings available, or you can call the school or send us an email. Depending on your issue, the urgency of it, you can choose the thing, the, the way to contact us that is best for you. However, when it comes to immigration issues regarding PGWP or work permits, it's best to call immigration directly, or if you know a trusted immigration counselor, I suggest meeting them. This is a list of our counselors. Joey Marin is our head counselor, Linda Bao, myself, Eve Eckford, and Diana Batokio. You can see our email addresses are listed on this PowerPoint. However, they're also on our website under staff and faculty. Now let's get into student responsibility. Being a college student is a big jump from being a high school student. And there's a lot of responsibility that you have to shoulder in order to be as successful as you possibly can. The first is understanding your program and keeping track of your grades. From our website, you can find the program that you're enrolled in. For example, here's the Associate of Arts degree. Now, if I click through the Associate of Arts degree page, I can find a checklist and GPA calculator that I can use to keep track of my program. Here it is. This checklist is invaluable. It will help you keep on track towards graduation and it'll help you be aware of the GPA requirements that you have in order to graduate. Remember, you have to have a 2.0 program GPA in order to graduate. Now, the other thing, the other, the other part of this university college puzzle, high school puzzle, academic puzzle, that is absolutely critical is the idea of attendance. Attending your classes is the number one thing you can do to be as successful as possible. I've seen a lot of very smart students who make the mistake of thinking that attendance isn't necessary. It absolutely is. And your grades will only improve the more you attend. As well, it's important to understand that academic dishonesty is taken very seriously here at the college. If, for example, you have someone else do your homework, you're sharing your homework or assignments, or even you're in a test looking at someone else's paper in order to sneak their answers, that can have serious consequences on your grade and later on when you try to graduate. So it is absolutely imperative to understand what is academic dishonesty and what isn't when you register in the future. Finally, safety, your safety while you're a student of ours is paramount. As you come to the school, make sure you know where the first aid room is, for example, where the AED is, where the emergency exits are, and for every class that you attend, you should know the emergency response procedures in case of earthquake or fire or any other emergency situation. Now, that's all I have to say. So thank you so much for meeting me today and for listening to what I've said. And I hope that what I've said helps shine some light on what you'll accomplish in the future. 
Good luck to all of you, and I can't wait to meet you. Hi, my name is Jocelyn Hebler. I am the Registrar and Office Manager at Coquitlam College. I would like to welcome you back to our Coquitlam and Surrey campuses. The Registrar's Office is responsible for student records and admissions into our programs. You can contact us regarding your student records, registration, transcripts, letters, medical insurance, tuition, and account balance, or any other questions you may have. If we are unable to answer you, your questions, we will direct you to the right person or department. Feel free to reach our registrar's office by email, by phone, or in person. The Coquitlam College campus is open Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Fridays from 8.30 to 3 p.m. The Surrey campus is open Monday to Thursdays from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday to Thursday and closed on Fridays. We have a friendly, as you can see back, diverse team in the registrar's office who are fluent in English, but also speak other languages, such as Mandarin, Korean, Farsi, and Hindi. We encourage you to visit our student portal at cclogin.ca, where you'll find valuable information such as our timetable, letter of enrollment, a copy of your unofficial transcript, requesting official transcripts and letters, as well as your T2202A tuition and enrollment certificate. Our registrar's team wishes you all the best in your studies and feel free to call, email, or visit us. Hello everyone, welcome to Coquitlam College. My name is Serena, I work in the admission office. I speak English and Mandarin. Feel free to visit us if you have any questions, we are here to help you. Namaste, my name is Karina. Hai. Aap sabhi ko Coquitlam College mein swagat hai. Hi everyone, um, my name is Karina and I'm in charge of transcript, travel letter, study permit extension and spousal letter. Hello, Coquitlam College Jenny. Hi guys, um, my name is Jenny. I'm in charge of um, overseas applications and letters. Uh, feel free to come by anytime and welcome. Um, my name is Helen. Uh, we can speak Chinese. If you need help, you can contact us. Thank you. My name is Diana. I'm an admin assistant, and I process applications and do TRV requests. Hi, I'm Sarah. Um, I process all the transcript requests, and I answer the phones and answer your student questions at the front. Hi, my name is Elaine, and I'm here as an administrative assistant to assist you. Um, I process certificates and uh, degrees, awards. Um, have a great semester. Hello everyone, my name is Sandy and um, today I'll be talking about the different platform that you'll be using during your study here at Coquitlam College. Um, so before I start, let me just share my screen so you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so let's get started. Um, the first platform that I'm going to talk about is the CC email. So as soon as you register for your courses, every student is assigned to a CC email. Your CC email address will be your last seven digit of your student number. For example, if your student number is 12345678, then your CC email address will be the last seven digit, which is 2345678 at ccstudent.ca. If this is the first time logging into the Outlook email, um, then the default password will be your date of birth in the format of date, date, month, 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 year, 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 year. So if you're, for example, if your birthday is on January 1st, 1999, then your default password will be 01, lowercase j, capital, uh, sorry, uppercase an, 1999 at CC student. CA. So once you inputted the default password, it is mandatory for you to change to a password of your choice. So since I already logged in before, um, I don't need to <laughs> change my password. I just need to type in my email address and my new password. And just wait a few seconds for the page to load. All right, we're in. So um, on the first page that you'll see is the inbox page. This is where you will um, check all your emails and any new messages from the school or your instructors. Um, please make sure to check this email regularly because all communications um, with the college or your instructor will be through your CC email. 
another thing that I want to point out is um, on the top left corner here, there is an icon that you can click. And once you click, you'll see all the application that um, student is eligible to use. So as a Kokomo College student, students are eligible to get full access to the Office 365 applications. So I will highly encourage students to take a look at the different application um, because it might be useful to your homework or um, doing presentations. Um, so yeah, you can come here and check out the different applications. All right, so second platform is our MyCC um, Moodle site. So this is a very important site because this is where you get all your course materials. So the login credential is exactly the same as your CC email, which is your CC email address and the password that you change to. Oops, I must have typed in the wrong password. <laughs> Let's try that again. Not now. All right, we're in. So on the home page, you will be welcome uh, with the different announcements. So this is very important because um, sometimes your instructor, if they have um, uh, any update or announcement to make, it will be posted on here, the homepage. And if there's any school activity or event, it will also be posted on the, this homepage as well. Second, where you can find your courses, um, you just need to scroll down to the very bottom. Here we are. Under my courses, you'll be able to see all the courses that you um, have registered in. So for example, let's click on business 100B. Once you click on your course, it will show the course content of that week. So you see that right now, the second week course content is not available. So only the first week is showing. And on the left-hand side here, you will see, this is where you can check your grades, um, sometimes hand in your assignments, and if you have online tests or quiz, you can also do it on this site. So let's go back to the homepage and click on the second class, Asia 200B. So um, some of the courses might not have content. Um, you will be bring to an empty page with no information. Don't panic. Um, it's, the reason why it's not showing any course content is because your teacher hasn't opened up the course content to public yet. So some instructor like to open up the content on the first day of class. So if you don't see any course content, that's okay, don't panic. Um, it's, not, it's not because there is some issue with the site. You just need to wait for your first class to go in and look at the course content. All right, and um, another thing that I want to point out is the My CC Library section. This is where you can find all the online library resources that we have. So um, if you have a book or if you want to um, borrow or see if there's an online copy of an article, you may come here and click on any of the online resource that we have. And uh, you may be able to find uh, the article or the book that you would like to read. Okay, so this is um, my CC. I think it's a pretty user-friendly website. Moving on, it's our student portal. So student portal is where students um, can request for their transcript, um, their tax form, update their personal information. So the login credential for my CC is your student number. And the password, the default password is your date of birth. Oops. 17. There you go. As soon as we log in, um, and if you haven't done so, the first page will bring you to um, enter your SIN uh, information for tax purposes, but we're just going to bypass this by clicking the home page. So on the home page, you will see the news and updates. So this is also another area you, where you will get the announcements and any um, update information about the campus. So um, make sure you read through here because sometimes there are some important messages that will be posted on here. 
And on the right hand side, you will see the shortcut links to our website. So for example, if you would like to calculate GPS, you can just click on the shortcut link here, GPA um, calculator, then it will bring you to the proper page. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see my calendar. Um, because I haven't registered any courses into this account, but if you are registered into courses, you will be able to see your schedule here. And on the top navigation part, um, personal under personal information, this is where you change your personal information, such as address, emails, and number, password, and et cetera. Um, under student record is where you request for transcript, um, request to print your timetable, report card, welcome letter, um, and T2202A form is your tax form. And lastly, under my schedule, um, this is where you can drop your course. So if you, if you are a university transfer student or an associate of arts degree student, you are eligible to drop your course on the student portal. So this is where you drop your courses. And if you have any questions or um, you want to know how to log into the different platform that we have, you can always go to our website under student services, student portal, my CC and CC email. Um, this page will have all the instructional videos on how to log into the different platforms. And lastly, um, our IT support. If you have any issues or questions, um, they are here to help from Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And uh, you can email them at helpdesk at curriculumcollege.com. All right, so that concludes my um, presentation. I hope you guys will have a wonderful semester and hopefully I get to see some of you guys in person soon. Thank you, bye. Hello everyone and a warm welcome to the Curriculum College Library the fall semester of 2022. I'm Billy Augustine, the college librarian, and along with Yiling Chang, our library assistant, we are thrilled to offer library and bookstore services for all patrons of our college. You may note down our contact information from here or by accessing the contact page within the college website. Here are our hours of operation. I'll be taking you through some useful information on library and bookstore. To start with, you can access our college library page by clicking on the library tab at the top right corner for college website as shown here. The library page contains useful information about the library and bookstore services. You can also search our online catalog and electronic resources using the magnifying lens available here. The other useful page for you will be the MyCC library page, which can be accessed after logging in through your MyCC account as shown here. Through this page, you have access to electronic databases or electronic resources for your research assignments, essays. So these databases such as EPCO, Academic Search Complete, Business Source Complete, JSTOR, Proquest eLibrary, NFP Campus and others are easily accessed through the links available in, on this page. On this page, the MyCC Library page, you will also find a link to the Writing Center page along with access to a host of open access resources. Our online catalog through our new library management system is available through the following three options. One, you can click on the large blue magnifying glass icon found on our library page. Two, you can access this catalog by clicking on the link available on the eDatabases page. And the option three will be to go in through the MyCC library page, scroll down, and you will find the link again here. For logging into your account for the first time, students can enter your 
eight digit student ID number as your library username and click on forgot your password option. You will then receive an email with a link to reset your password and then you can choose a safe and convenient password. For staff, please enter your library username as provided by library. And you may use the same procedure. On creating and logging into your account, you will be able to see your account summary where you see information on books you have reserved through the system, marked as holds, and then if you owe any fine to the library through coquitlamcollege.com. And we have the library tab at the top right corner. On accessing through the tab, we have a blue magnifying glass and clicking on it takes us to the online catalog. So this is through the new library management system of the college and we can perform basic search through the catalog, advanced search, and we have electronic resources also available through this system. Coming back to the library page, we have information on the library print resources, the e-database is subscribed to by the college, which will be very helpful for you. Some guides for your research, which is available on your MyCC page. And here you will be having some information on the Writing Center too. Citation and referencing the various citation formats as well. Under library services, we have the library policies and procedures, and you can find the information regarding book circulation, Under bookstore services, you can find the information about book sales, bursary books, student ID cards, volunteering options, parking passes, and the hours of operation of the library. Let us first look into the electronic databases. As a student of our college, you will be required to use these databases when submitting an essay or an assignment. EBSCO's Academic Research Complete is one database which gives you full access to journals on various subjects such as math, science, health, medicine, engineering, technology, psychology, social sciences, a business source complete is another academic database which gives you access to business journals and scholarly articles. And JSTOR, we have a few collections that are very useful for students and instructors, such as the Arts and Science Collection, Language and Literature Collection, the Business and Economics Collection. Again, searching through ProQuest eLibrary, you can browse through newspapers, magazines, scholarly articles, books, etc. And we have also a video database, a Canadian video database, which, is, which contains videos, educational videos on themes such as environment, indigenous voices, and so many others. As I said before, we can navigate through our online catalog using the new library management system by clicking here. So through this system, you can search through keyword, by title, by author, subject, or others. And you can filter by format, either books, electronic resources, etc. 
So let us use the word maybe psychology. On searching through the system, you will find that the results are of various formats since we use the default search type. So we have books. As you scroll down, we have some electronic resources as well. And for students, you are welcome to place holes on fiction titles and staff can place holes on fiction and non-fiction titles. So right now, let us say that I'm interested in this book, that I'm an instructor, that I'm interested in this book. I'm just placing a hold on this book. After I look at summary, I'm interested in the book. So on placing a hold, I'm taken to this page where I can specify that I may be contacted by phone or by email and I can also select my mobile carrier and get the date on which this book can be obtained from the library. So this book will be reserved in the library for you. So as I said, students can select fiction titles So let us say so as a student if you're interested in a book and you see that it is a fiction title you can place a hole on the book right here or you can see the details and then place a hold after going through the summary in the same way as I discussed before. But for to, to do this anyway, you need to log into your account. See so your account for students. You can enter your library username, which will be your 88 digit student number. And staff, please provide your a library username as provided by the library already. So if this is your first time, you can use your username and then click on forgot your password and you will be getting an email with the reset link for your password. So since I've logged in already, I'm logging into my account and on clicking on my account, I can see if I have placed a hold on a book. I have checked out a book from the library whether I have any fine or payment due to the library or if I have selected some books as my list. Now let's go back to the library homepage. So on clicking on the bookstore services, we see that the fall UT textbook list can be found by clicking on this link and you can see that course, the title, the instructor and a link to the book. And in some cases, the books are available in the bookstore. So for example, I click on this link and I'm taken to the vital source destination where I can get the electronic copy of the book. Or if you want a paperback, you can always come into the college bookstore if it is highlighted in red to the right. Coming back to the bookstore services, you can find the list of prices for the books, the information on this timings for the book store and Monday to Friday we have the bookstore and the library open 
from 8.30 to 4.30. The bookstore timings are from 9 to 3.30 with a break between 1.30 and 2 p.m. We have a form for bursary students and student ID cards, which are necessary during examinations, are available on a first come first serve basis. And you require your original photo ID and an active student status in the student registration system to get that. Students who are interested in volunteering at the Coquitlam College Library can use this QR code or the, this link to fill in your availability. Parking passes are required at the Coquitlam College campus and they are provided at $40 per semester when issued during the first month of each semester. When issued in the second month onwards, you have to pay $60 to obtain your parking pass. All students are expected to use this link or the QR code to fill in your parking pass form. Cars of students parked without a parking pass may be towed away at the expense of the student. We have a quiet study space for students adjacent to the main library. This library study space is to be used for individual study only and not for group discussions or other social activities. We are happy to know we have student volunteering opportunities at the college library and interested students can scan this QR code to fill in the volunteer information form. Link to this form is also available in the bookstore services page within the library web page. Thank you for your attention. I'm wishing you a great semester. Bye. Hello everyone and welcome to Coquitlam College. In this portion of the orientation, we will be covering some general health and wellness information that all students should know. Um, all students are required to have medical insurance such as MSP or another private medical insurance provider. If you do not have it, you can contact Coquitlam College office where you can purchase it on a semester basis through a school approved insurance provider. Please do so as soon as possible if you are not already covered. We at Coquitlam College understand that being an international student comes with its own unique sets of challenges. For those of you who feel that you may need further mental or physical health support, here are two free resources you can take advantage of. Moving Forward Family Services offers free telephone counseling or extremely low cost long term counseling options. Another free resource is called Here to Talk. Here to Talk is a government provided resource that offers both telephone or mobile chat counseling options through their website. These two services can be used together or separate. Thank you for listening and have a great semester.